Hi, I'm Nurin Aisha. I'm a new account executive in this company. Previously, I worked as an accountant at a top growth. Therefore, I will apply all my knowledge and skills that I've learned from the previous company to the better in this company. Hello everyone, my name is Umu Farnajwa. I'm also a member of Junior Executive Accounting of AASIA Berhad. Previously, I was an accountant at Petronas. During my career, I've seen a lot of accounting fraud and I'm delighted to contribute my knowledge to this company. Hi, my name is Siti Mas Nur Shohada Beti Muslihat. I'm a new executive accountant of AASIA Berhad. Previously, I'm working as an accountant at Telecom Malaysia Berhad. Therefore, I will apply all skill, knowledge and experience for bringing this company for making a better decision and improve their performance. Today, I would like to present about the company background of AirAsia. AirAsia is a Malaysia multinational low-cost airline headquartered near Kuala Lumpur. It is the largest airline in Malaysia by fleet size and destination. AirAsia operates scheduled domestic and international flights to more than 165 destinations spanning 25 countries. AirAsia was established in 1993 and began operation on 8 November 1996. Its main base is Kelai Edua, the low-cost carrier terminal Kuala Lumpur International Airport Kelai A in Sepang, Selangor. It employs more than 20,000 staff and has just over 9.7 billion ringgit market capitalization. AirAsia has constantly been named the world's best low-cost carrier by Skytrax in a row in international travel and airline awards including the last honor for 2019. For management approach, I have three point factor to consider having a segment reporting, second type of segment, third identify the chief of decision making and its responsibility. Factor to consider having a segment reporting, first nature of the product and service. An entity may produce report in which its business activity are presented in a variety of ways. Second type of cost customer uh, has to first business to business B two B is the term used to describe a business relationship between a, at least two companies. Second business to consumer B two C is the term used to describe a business relationship between one company and at least one individual consumer. Next, nature of production process has three: technology process, transport process, storage process. Method used to distribute product and service. How the product and service are being delivered. Next type of segment: first, geographic segmentation. Asia catered to mainly the Asian market, hence the name. In Asia. They hence practice geographic segmentation by focusing their service primarily in Asia. In Asia. Second, demographic segmentation. Being a low cost airline, they cater to people in the low to medium income group. Third, psychographic segmentation. Their main customer is the cost, cons cost conscientious traveler. The shift of decision making and its responsibility. First, Datuk Kamaruddin Ben Meranun, male, Malaysian, 16, 16 years old, is a co-founder of AASIA. He was appointed as a non-independent executive chairman of Capital A Berhad, formerly known as AASIA Group Berhad, on 30 March 2018. Next, Tansri Tony Fernandes, male, 58 years old, is a co-founder of AASIA. He was appointed as a non-independent executive director and chief executive officer of Capital A Berhad, formerly known as AASIA Group Berhad, on 30 March 2018. Dr. Abdul Aziz Bin Abu Bakar, male, Malaysian, 68 years old, was appointed a non-executive director of Capital A Berhad, formerly known as AASIA Group Berhad, on 30 March 2018. He is the chairman of the Risk Management and Sustainability Committee and a member of the Audit and Nomination and, Nomination and Remuneration Committee of the Board of Capital A. 
Datuk Farm Lee Mel, Malaysia, 61 years old, was appointed a senior independent non-executive director of Capital A Berhad, formerly known as Asia Group Berhad, on 30 March 2018. He is a member of the Audit Committee and Chairman of the Nomination and Remuneration Committee and Safety Review Board of Capital A. Datuk Mohamed Kadar bin Marikan, male, Malaysian, 65 years old, was appointed an independent non-executive director of Capital A Berhad, formerly known as AirAsia Group Berhad, on 30 March 2018. He is the chairman of the Audit Committee and a member of the Risk Management and Sustainability Committee and Safety Review Board of Capital A. Surina Binti Shukri, female, Malaysian, 46 years old, was appointed an independent non-executive director of Capital A Berhad, formerly known as AirAsia Group Berhad, on 31 31st January 2022. She is a member of Nomination and Remuneration Committee of the Board of Capital A. Now let's take a look at segment information about A Asia. This is geographical segment that reported by A Asia Berhad in 2020. We have revenue for each of the segments that we're going to sum up all revenue to calculate the 10% threshold revenue test. The formula is the revenue of each segment divided by the total revenue for all segments. In this case, total revenue is 5,998,110,000. We've calculated all the segments for 10% revenue test and this revenue test resulted to three reportable segments which consists of Malaysia, Thailand and India and for the four non-reportable segments consists of Philippines, Indonesia, Japan and the non-airline. After determining the reportable segments, we shall determine whether the total revenue for reportable segments constitutes 75% or more of the entity's revenue. By this 75% rule, we got 81%. Therefore, no additional segment should be identified. For the purpose of assignment, we construct new segments information to make the assignment's criteria. The change is at the amount of revenue at Philippines which is at RM 637,800 and for the non-airline at RM 195,119 and from that, by testing 10% revenue test, we got 4 reportable segments consist of Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand and India while 3 non-reportable segments which consist of Indonesia, Japan and non-airline and for the 75% rule, we got 92%. I would like to present new segment report of AirAsia. This table shows that this is disclosure of segment report for profit or loss before tax. The reportable segment has been separated and presented independently while non-reportable segment has been combined to become one segment. The presentation for asset and liabilities is seen is like profit or loss before tax. The new segment report as shown in the table. Conclusion of segment reporting Asia used segment reporting to document the performance of many areas of operation all over the selected countries. Advantage of segment reporting First, improve context. Segment reporting also allows stakeholders to get a better sense of the plantation that might affect overall number. Second, separation of profitable segment. The key, the key advantage of segment reporting is transparency for business that operate in different categories of geography area. Segment reporting can reveal which areas are profitable and which are drained on the bottom line. This advantage, first emphasis of on the present segment reporting, can place too much of a focus on short term number. For example, a business might create a deep division just for its online work. That division could run a significant deficit before the right people and infrastructure are in place. Second, data manipulation. Segment reporting lends itself to data manipulation if the information is reported in the true management eyes styles. This gives company leaders more distraction in how it determines how segments are constructed and what metrics are reported. For the basis of preparation of interim report, 
in MFRS 134, Interim Financial Reporting adopts a discrete method as a basis for preparation of interim report. The discrete method takes the view that each of interim period should be treated as an accounting period distinct from the annual cycle. Incomplete transactions are treated according to the same principle as are applied at the year end. This has the advantage that the elements of interim financial statements are defined in the same way as for the annual financial statement. Under this method, interim reports are intended to predict and explain the financial positions and financial performance for the discrete period, though the discrete period may be a segment of the annual period. Revenue and expenses items to be measured and recognized in the same way that annual financial statements are prepared as per the discrete method. Two accounting policy that use this interim report. The first one is the borrowing cost. The difference between the amount recorded as a borrowings and the associated redemption value is recognized in the profit or loss throughout the borrowings. They are state amortized costs using the effective interest method to the acquisition, construction or a production of a qualifying asset. The second one is cash and cash equivalent. Bank overdraft are included within short-term borrowings in current liabilities in the statement of financial position. Cash and cash equivalents are included cash and bank balance, money market instrument, deposit and other short-term highly liquid investment. A Asia Burhat has 31st December year end. The company is presenting its quarterly financial statement as interim report. Quarterly report is collection of unaudited financial statement consists of balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statements issued by company every quarter. Furthermore, this statement should come up with year to date current and comparative. For example, last year's quarter to this year's quarters result to report quarterly figures. In this case, there are four quarters to be provided in interim report, which are the first quarter, 1st January 2020 until 31st March 2020, followed by the second quarter, 1st April 2020 until 30 June 2020, and third quarter is from 1st July 2020 until 30 September 2020 and lastly, fourth quarter from 1st October 2020 until 31st 12 2020. Next, the content that should be present in the interim report are first, each of the heading and subtotals that were included in its most recent financial statement. Second, the selected explanatory notes as required by the standard. Third, the basic and diluted earning per share on the face of the segment if the, if the entity present the item of profit or loss in a separate, separate account. And lastly, the report also should be prepared on a consolidated basis if the most recent annual financial statements was a consolidated statement. Next, I would like to present the period for the current and cooperative each statement prepared by A Asia. For cumulative, the interim report is from 1st January 2020 to 30 September 2020 and for the cooperative is 1st January 2019 to 30 September 2019. Other than that, A Asia also prepared the statement changes in equity with the current interim report from 1st January 2020 to 30 September 2020 and the cooperative is from 1st January 2019 to 30 September 2019. Last but not least, regarding the statement of cash flow, AHU prepared the current interim report started 1st January 2020 to 30 September 2020 and the cooperative statement of cash flow from 1st January 2019 to 30th September 2019. Four adjustments made by the company included in the interim report. First, from property, plan and equipment, PPE. ASU purchase of PPE in 2020 amounting to $94,686,000 and proceed 
from disposal of PPE amounting to 277 million and 313,000. Second adjustment about net loss for AASIA for financial year ended 31st December 2020, where there is in if there is increase of net loss amounting of five million eight hundred and eighty eight thousand compared to previous net loss only two hundred eighty three thousand. It is because of the global economy, in particularly the commercial airline industry, first an uncertain uncertainty over the expected timing of recovery of the COVID nineteen pandemic.